Hi, this is the third segment in our exploration of the gradient tool in Photoshop. If you missed the last segment, there's a link to it in the description for this one. So, as you remember from last time, you edit a gradient by getting the gradient swatch and clicking on it to open up the gradient editor. And that lets you change what the gradient is. Last time we edited a solid gradient, and this time we're going to change to a noise gradient and see how to edit one of those. The important thing to remember about the noise gradients is that they have a large random component. You don't have stops and you don't have the fine control you have with a solid gradient. It's more a question of just clicking on the randomize button here until you get something that you like. But although you can't directly control the gradient, you can control the parameters within which the random factor operates. So let's see how that's done. This first parameter lets you adjust the roughness of the gradient. That's the sharpness of the lines of noise, of course. Once again, you can double click and just change the number, change it to 75. Or you can click on the little arrow here on the right, and that will open up this little slider. And you can slide back and forth to get the um, roughness that you want. Or if you have a more recent version of Photoshop, you can just slide on the word roughness itself, and that will change the roughness of the gradient. Down here at zero, it looks almost like a smooth gradient, except that you don't have the stops and you don't have the control. You just click the randomize and get whatever you get. The higher the roughness, the more lines and colors you have in your gradient. Up here at 100, you have all of these little fine one pixel lines. And a one pixel line can give you real problems when you're trying to use the gradient, especially if you have a smaller scale for it. So um, we're going to set this to about 80. And that will give us lots of different colors in the gradient, but the lines will be a little bit soft. So we'll just leave it there. Over here on the right, we have a couple of checkboxes. The first one restricts the colors. That keeps them from being oversaturated. So you can see what happens if you click that button. And we'll uh, get another one. And you can see that you can see colors that are oversaturated and too difficult to see if this button is not clicked. So you just do whatever you want to with that one. I'm going to leave it checked for right now. The second one adds transparency to the gradient. Once again, you don't actually have any control over this. You don't have control over where the transparency is, and you don't have any control over the amount of transparency you have. And transparency doesn't have its own randomize button. So when you click the randomize button with transparency enabled, you will get different colors, and you will get different amounts of transparency as you click. And uh, you have really no control over that. So we're going to leave add transparency off. Over here on the left, you can change the colors that are going to show up in your gradient. And you have three color models to choose from. You can use RGB, which of course is red, green, and blue. Or you can change to HSB, which is hue, the saturation, and the brightness. Or you can use the lab color mode, which is the lightness in the top slider, and then the A and B color ranges below that. The interesting thing about these sliders is that if you move them around and then change to a different color mode, Photoshop makes no attempt to match the colors you had. Instead, it leaves the sliders where you had them, so the color range is totally different. Let me show you what I mean. Let's go to RGB, and I'm going to remove green by dragging the slider on the right all the way to the left, so there's no green in that color range at all. And then I'm going to lighten up the colors by just using the top half of the red range and the top half of the blue range. And now as I click randomize, will stay in the purple and magenta kind of range as we click. If we move to the HSB color model, you will see that the saturation now has been pushed all the way to the left, which means that there is no color in the gradient at all. All we have here is a grayscale, so the hue really doesn't matter. And because the brightness was blue before, and we were only using the top half of it, we're only using the top half of the brightness. So as we click on the randomize button, you'll find that it never gets more than about 50% gray. If we move down to the lab color mode, once again, we're only using the top half of the lightness range, so it's always going to be light. In the A color, since both sliders are pushed all the way to the left, all we have are green colors. So we're going to stay in the green range as we click on the randomize button. So that's the way that works, and you just need to be aware of that. Personally, I prefer to work in HSB. I find that it gives me a lot more control. Your preference may be different, in which case, do whatever you like. But I'm going to use the HSB. Now, the person who asked to learn how to use the gradient was really interested in making a monochrome amber gradient. So we're going to start by opening up the saturation and the brightness, so we have the full range on both of those. And then I'm going to 
move the color sliders so that we just have the amber colors. Now notice that the closer the sliders get to each other, the more we restrict the color range until we're restricted to just about um, a little tiny slice of the oranges, which gives us the amber color that we're looking for. If you recall, when we were working with the solid gradients, you could pull the sliders over each other, and you can here too. You can make it so that the white slider is the one that's to the left instead of the black slider being to the left. It doesn't seem to matter. You don't wind up using the reds all the way through and back over here the way that you might expect. Um, it's just the difference between the two of them that Photoshop pays attention to. So um, just put them wherever you want. I just wanted you to be aware that you can drag them over each other. The white will not stop when it hits the black and vice versa. So we're just going to narrow that color range down and click randomize a few times and see you got a lot of gray if you have the saturation all the way to the left. So I'm going to pull the saturation back so that we're only using fairly saturated colors. And um, I'm not sure that I want all these really dark colors in the gradient either, so I'm going to pull that up as well so that we just have various shades of the amber. And then just click randomize until we get something that I think looks really good. And that looks pretty good, so let's keep that. And as always, we can just change the name up here. I'm going to call this um, Amber Noise and click the New button, and that will add the gradient to your presets up here at the top. That will not give you a new gradient to work with. Remember, New just adds it to the presets. So once it's there, I'm going to click OK, and now we have the gradient to use. So um, if we use a linear gradient, looks really good. The, um, Angular gradients look fantastic when you're using noise, but if we use radial, we might wind up with some moray patterns. I don't know if you can see those in the movie, but they're pretty obvious here on my screen. And the way to fix that is to open up the gradient again by clicking on the gradient swatch, and then just decrease the roughness. Now that will not change everything the way that it would if you use the randomize button again. It will just change the roughness, so you'll have mostly the same colors in mostly the same places, just bits of it will um, be smoother or less smooth. Let's change this down to about, you know, we'll go to 59. And now when I click OK and um, redo that gradient by clicking once again in the center and pulling up to about where the gradient stopped before, as you can see the moray patterns disappear. So that's one way to fix it. You can also use the blur in order to smooth those out a little bit, but I find that I like the results better when I just change the roughness on the gradient a little. As always, your new gradient will be lost if Photoshop crashes before you've closed and reopened, so you either need to close and reopen Photoshop if you really like this one, or just go over here and save all of your gradients or open the preset manager and just save that one you've just made so that it's safe and you have it forever. And that's all there is to that. Next time we'll see how to combine gradients and other things to make noise that has both lines and snow, and we'll find out how to make radial gradients with two center points by using two of them. Until then, this has been Robin Wood, and I hope that you found this helpful.